Hello everybody, welcome to Breeze Cards here with a special edition of my top cards of the 1970s. Please like and subscribe, I'm doing top 100. I did the uh, check out my video on the top 100 of the 1980s and I did a video on the top 100 of the 1990s, now I'm on to the 70s. So starting out at number one is the 1970 Topps second year card, Reggie Jackson number 140. And this card sold on eBay for $43,100. So these are the best cards according to sales or auction sales or selling on eBay. Uh, as, of, as of right now, the best, the highest prices I could find. Now, I'm not saying these cards are worth that because obviously not in, the, in that condition, all of them. Um, going back to the Reggie Jackson though, this is not a PSA 10, but it's a, it's a graded card. Uh, gem Mint 10, so maybe real close to that 43,000. And number two is the Wizard of Oz, okay, probably the best fielding shortstop of all time, his rookie year with the San Diego Padres. And this card is card number 116, his rookie card, and it sold on eBay for $31,200 in a Gem Mint 9, I believe. Very hard to get that because of the centering, uh, the 79 Smith. At number Three is the 1975 Tops Nolan Ryan. You can see this one's off centered. Uh, I do have another one that's a little bit better centering wise, but again, to get this in a Gem Mint 10 is very difficult. But that card in a Gem Mint 10, the Nolan Ryan card number 500 sold for $31,200. At number four is the 75 rookie card of Robin Yount, the Milwaukee Brewers. And the Yount, uh, card number 223 in the 75 set is rookie card, sold for $28,800 on eBay. Next up is the, the rookie card of Thurman Munson. Uh, Short-lived career due to his tragic uh, plane accident going back to Ohio to visit his family. This is in a, a excellent condition. It's a five, card number 189. That's Thurman Munson's rookie card. Uh, that sold for $26,101 on eBay. Um, not the five, but probably a, an eight or nine. Because that card's very hard. The 70 is very hard to get in in gem mint condition. And so is the 71s with the black borders. Here's Steve Garvey. He came up as a third baseman and uh, transferred over to first with the that Dodgers infield of, of Bill Russell and Short, David Lopes the second. Ron Say, the Penguin in third, and Garvey moved over to first, and that's why they were in the World Series uh, 78, 77, I believe, 78, and then uh, 81. Did they go in 81? Yes, in 81 they beat the Yankees with Valenzuela, and uh, that's the doc, that's Steve Garvey. The Steve Garvey rookie card number 341 sold on eBay for $25,393. Next up is the the second year Munson card with the gold cup of the Black Boys, 1971. Many people believe that this card is better. Uh, it's actually better than the 70 rookie. That card sold for uh, $21,510. Next up is the last card of Willie Mays. Uh, the 1973 Willie Mays with the Mets. Uh, this is in a seven, uh, very good condition, but in a nine or a 10, no card number 305, that sold for $18,260. Next up is the one of the greatest switch hitters to play the game. And I think he had uh, 500, 500 home runs and 3,000 hits. Him and only a few others like Mantle and Mays did that. And he was a switch hitter. Uh, this is in a mint eight, but in a mint nine or a mint ten, the rookie Eddie Murray sold for seventeen thousand six hundred dollars. Next up is my nineteen seventy five. One of my favorite players growing up as a kid was George Brett. Uh, here's his rookie card. The centering on this card is terrible, uh, but if you had it in really good condition, an eight or nine, uh, I'm not even sure if the ten even exists with the seventy five set probably somewhere in number 228 that sold for $17,198 on eBay. Next is the, if it wasn't for this guy, Brett would have been the best third baseman of the of the 80s. 
Uh, he came up two years earlier. So this is uh, Mike Schmidt, and along with Ron Say. Ron Say actually has his own rookie card as well. Uh, but this is the perhaps the greatest third baseman to ever play the game, Mike Schmidt, Michael Jack Schmidt. It's card number 615, uh, in an excellent condition, five. But if you had this in an eight or a nine, um, that'll sell for, that sold for $15,766. Uh, next up is the 73, Nolan Ryan. Uh, that's, centering is a little bit off. As you can see, the left side of the, of the border is very cut. But again, this is a 73, Nolan Ryan collected this myself and uh, that goes that that's card number 290 and that sold for sixteen thousand two hundred one dollars next is Burt Bly 11 his rookie card Burt Bly 11 with the blackboard is a 1971 rookie card of Burt Bly 11 and that's really in good condition and that card uh, in a nine card number 25 sold for fifteen thousand fifty two dollars next up is the 78 Nolan Ryan and that's in uh, that's in really good condition there. The '78 Nolan Ryan, all right. And not sure why that sells for a lot of the other, more than the other '70s Nolan Ryan's. Here's another copy of it. This one has uh, centering is off a little bit, but the not sure why that sold for so much. Um, card number 400. And that sold for fourteen thousand eight hundred ninety-nine dollars. Here's a the record breaker uh, '78 from the '77 season. Uh, most games with 10 or more strikeouts lifetime. Uh, next up is the, the lefty, Steve Carlton, and if he was on some better teams, he would even be better with wins. He played, he, had, he played on some, some crappy teams in the early 80s, uh, but that's his rookie card, the 1970 with the Cardinals, uh, Steve Carlton. And that card sold for $14,000. Next up, uh, is the the rookie card in 1972 and this features uh, not only Carlton Fisk but also in the center there is Cecil Cooper who had a tremendous season uh, sorry tre tremendous career of his own started with the Red Sox but then he went on to the Harvey's wall bangers uh, and was was very lucky to play with guys like after leaving the Red Sox with Yaz and, and Lynn and Rice and and Tion and you know Fisk and uh, Dwight Evans, and that that tremendous team. He, he was actually lucky to go to the Red to go to the Red Sox. I mean, from the Red Sox and go to the the Brewers and play with Harvey's Wallbangers, Robin Yao, Mahler, himself, Cooper, and Ted Simmons was over there. Gorman Thomas, Ben Ogilvy, Pete Vukovic, uh, Riley Fingers. What a tremendous team that was. Uh, that card, the '72 Fisk uh, rookie card. Uh, where is it? Uh, sold for $12,600. Next up is a, a 1970 Hank Aaron, Hammer and Hank Aaron, all time home run leader. Uh, and still the all time RBI leader to this day. But this card, the 1970 uh, Nolan Ryan, if you're interested, uh, number 500 sold for $10,755 on eBay. Follow that up with the, the last card of Hammer and Hack is the 76, and that's why this card is iconic. It's his last Topps baseball card, and uh, you can see him there, no longer an outfielder or a first baseman, but a designated hitter. And this made uh, Mike Payne's book of 300 great baseball times of the baseball cards of the century. Next up, now this card is very interesting to me. This is the first card of the 1974 set, and uh, it says Hank Aaron, all-time home run king. Okay, now when this card was published, Hank Aaron did not yet break the record. He was, it was, he broke it two weeks into the season, very early in the season. But imagine, just imagine if that, that never happened. Maybe tragic accident, or got hurt, or ended his career somehow. This card would be even more iconic. But it is iconic because this is before he actually broke the record. He broke the record uh, two weeks into the 74 season. Here is a, an iconic card featuring tremendous home run leaders of all time. Uh, possibly could be the three greatest baseball players of all time, many would say. Babe Ruth, Hank Aaron, and Willie Mays on one card. That's the 1973 uh, 
card number one that sold for nine thousand five hundred sixty dollars on ebay here's an interesting card that was put out in 78 little did they know that when they published this card and they figured out the top shortstops rookie shortstops little did they know that they would have two hall of famers on there paul Mahler upper right and alan trammell lower left both in the hall of fame now uh tremendous shortstops for the tigers and brewers uh uh, Molitor unfortunately went when he came to the Brewers had to transfer positions because Robin Yount already claimed uh, shortstop uh, here's a, an iconic card the 73 Roberto Clemente uh, his last card in a mint 8 uh, in a 9 it really sells for a lot and the reason being is that at this point uh, he's already deceased uh, he, and he deceased with 3,000 hits on the nose and uh, in that tragic uh, plane accident for, on a charity mission to Nicaragua. And uh, this, this card here, the 70, 73 Roberto Clemente, card number 50, sold for $9,285. Next up is one of the greatest relief pitchers of all time, Dennis Eckersley, his rookie card 76 with the Cleveland Indians. But many don't remember that he was a starter, and uh, he was a tremendous starter, actually. He started with the Indians and the Red Sox before transferring to the bullpen and becoming, uh, you know, le leaving a mark as one of the greatest relief pitchers of all time. And I think in 1990, he has one of the lowest ERAs of modern-day history. Uh, I think it was like a .90 ERA, somewhere around there. It was 1990 with the A's, but uh, I think that might be the, if not the lowest ERA, one of the top. Here's a 74 rookie of one of the greatest athletes that ever played baseball. Uh, Dave, Dave Winfield was drafted in three professional sports, basketball, football, and baseball. Tremendous, tremendous athlete. He was the first also to be a $20 million contract in 1981, uh, double digit million. Uh, 1981, Steinbrenner got him from the Padres and he shared the outfield with Reggie Jackson on that 81 team that went to the World Series. They lost to the Dodgers, but uh, here's the, the iconic uh, Gary Carter rookie card, 75. The Winfield card, uh, card number 456, sold for $8,774 on eBay. And this in, uh, 75 Carter in a gem mid-10 with the catchers and outfielders sold for $8,179, card number 620. All right. That's the top 25. So I'm, gonna, I'm trying to make this list uh, short. I know I have long videos, but I like to get it out there. This is actually an autograph. I don't know if you can see it there. Of Noel Ryan and the, the 72 tops. Uh, really, really good condition. This card is probably maybe one of my most expensive cards if I actually got it priced out. But uh, without the auto, card number 595, that sold for... $7,900. With the auto, I think it's probably worth more. Follow that up with the 76 Nolan Ryan uh, with the Angels. And the 76 Nolan Ryan sold for, at card number 330, $7,372 on eBay. And then we follow that up with another Nolan Ryan. This is the 77 Nolan Ryan. Uh, the 77 Nolan Ryan will get you $7,170. Well, that's what it sold for in a nine. This is not a mint nine. Like the, you can see the, the cut is not that great. The centering is off, but this is again from 1977. So basically, guys, just to let you know, I have every set, every top set from 1972, all the way up to uh, I believe 1989 or 90, maybe 91, and then then I took a little break, but then I got them all. After uh, in the 2000s, I started buying the sets again. So I I have it all, just not everything's not gem mint ten. But I got them. Uh, the, the, the nostalgia of it to me is capturing. It's uh, it's the what keeps you going uh, as a card collector. The way I vision cards is that every time you open a pack or get a set and you go through them, and it's just like finding a treasure out of a treasure chest. When you know when you know what you're looking for and you find it and you get it, it's a lot of research. It's a lot of work. But this is the 74 rows, and I researched that on eBay. Card number 100, and it sold for. In a gem mint eight six thousand dollars so again this is the, the the borders aren't that great but the corners are sharp it's a, it's a good card uh 74 rows and 
in top condition, it gets you a lot of money. This card right here is the the Black Border 71 Pete Rose, and that's very hard to get in, in, in good condition. This is an excellent condition, five by PSA, but a little bit better than that. Uh, and an eight is sold for six thousand dollars on eBay. Next up, Mr. October, Mr. Clutch, Reggie Jackson with the 76 A's All Star card. All right. And that's card number 500, and that's sold for $5,049. Okay, I'm going to like to get this over. This is an interesting card here. This is the card never to be. Never published, but was made. Uh, it's a 1976 Reggie Jackson, uh, if he was still with the Orioles. All right, now we have a 78 Rose. The 78 Rose, I'm, got, I'm outside, guys, so I got a little breeze, so the background is blowing a little bit but I like I like the lighting outside better than inside the natural light but the 78 rows uh, in a mint nine I'm sorry 79 rows card number 650 sold for five thousand dollars all right next up is a an iconic card from 1975 again out of the set and this features both Hank Aaron and Mickey Mantle as uh, Throw back to the 1957 most valuable players, and that card on eBay, the 75 Mant uh, Aaron Mays, I'm sorry, Aaron and Mantle MVPs from 57 sold for $4,499 on eBay. Next up, you got the 75 Schmidt. And this card's actually in really, really good condition. Uh, again, sharp edges, sharp edges. I would hopefully get this at a seven or an eight. The centering is, is pretty good. It's a little bit off to the left. Uh, but again, it's the 75 Schmidt, card number 70, sold for $5,000 in a mint nine. Okay. I'll try to fix that there. All right, so now we go to a 1970, an iconic card out of uh, Mike Payne's book, the 300 great, 300 great baseball cards of the 20th century. And that's Nolan Ryan saving the day with the Miracle Mets out of Game Three, and that card on eBay. And this is the this is the book that I was that I was referring to, uh, and that's by Mike Payne. And I, I really respect his stuff. Uh, the guy knows knows a lot, obviously, um, about cards, and a lot of research went into his work, and just a, a great great book. I recommend anybody to buy it. Here is the next card up, is the 77 rookie card of Dale Murphy, lower left, and the 77 rookie card of Dale Murphy in a good condition, 476, sold for $3,000. 75 Thurman Munson, 75 Thurman Munson, okay. Munson, again, I talked about having a short career 75 Munson, number 70, sold for $1,213 on eBay. The 75, also, uh, another rookie card from 75 lower left is Jim Rice. And Jim Rice, uh, the power hitter from Boston, uh, played on many good teams uh, in 78, in the 76 world, uh, 76 was it? 75 World Series, he was actually hurt, which really hurt the Red Sox against the Big Red Machine, because they had Dwight Evans and Fred Lynn also in the outfield. They also had this guy, Carl Yastrzemski, first base. This is the Yastrzemski 75 uh, base card. And he has, again, one of the greatest players of the 70s, uh, Triple Crown winner in 1967. Uh, next up is the 71 Ernie Banks Black Border, tough card to get in good condition. That's in a Gem Mint 7. That's Ernie Banks, uh, one of the top shortstops of all time, power hitter, hit for average, great fielder. Uh, they call him Mr. Cub, Hall of Famer, of course. And uh, at the end of his career, as you can see, he, they have him at first base here. He moved over to first base. Here is a, an iconic Kellogg's card of Roberto Clemente. And the Kellogg's, that, that Banks, by the way, uh, Where's the banks on here? Uh, 
I think it sold for over a thousand dollars. But the Kellogg's here, uh, this card sold for a uh, Gem Mint Nine seven hundred and ninety eight dollars. It's the Kellogg's three D Superstar Roberto Clemente from nineteen seventy. Here is the seventy five Hank Aaron, his second to last card, and the seventy five Hank Aaron, uh, the card number six sixty, sold for. $425 and a Gem Mint 8 on eBay. Just to get a look at it. The 76 Seaver was also a big seller. The 76 Seaver uh, on eBay sold for $395 and a Gem Mint 9. The rookie of another great closer, the 77 Bruce Suter. Uh, the 77 Bruce Suter. Uh, Bruce Suter was one of the greatest closers. Uh, not so much with the Cubs, but when he went over to the Cardinals, uh, he won that World Series, I think it was 83 or 82. And he was in every All-Star game, closing the game out in the late 70s and early 80s. There's the Hawk, 1977. Andre Dawson rookie card, upper left. And the Hawk... Uh, the 77 Hawk, card number 473, I think it is sold for $300 and a Gem Mint 8. The 76 Pete Rose was another big seller from the 70s. And that card sold on eBay, card number 240. 240, sold for $295 on eBay. Now, no longer going to go through prices, but I'm going to go through some that were in Mike Payne's book. This is the Topps traded Steve Carlton from 1972, the year that he got he got traded over to the Phillies and he won like 31 games on a crappy team. The seven no-hitters, many considered to be the greatest pitcher of all time. The longevity of it alone is immense. Uh, people say that he doesn't deserve it because he was never a Cy Young award winner. Well, I say, look at that man's record. Look at Nolan Ryan's record and uh, uh, stats. Look at the stats in uh, in 1973. Look at his stats in 1981. And look at his stats in 1987, and he got gypped. He got robbed of three Cy Youngs. Check it out, look at the stats. Here's uh, Frank Thomas's. Now this card is in Mike Payne's book because it's the first Topps card to feature a DH. And that's why that card is iconic. This is... Uh, Iconic. I think it was uh, when he had the 3,000 strikeouts. This card is iconic. Uh, in 1974, the San Diego Padres were thought to be moving to Washington, and it never happened. But in 1974, Topps produced cards with uh, the San Diego Padres set, all the, all the players going to as the Washington Nationals. And Willie McCovey is the best one of the set, so that's why I put that in there. This is an error card. The whole Padres... Set is an error, is our errors. This is the fixed card. Uh, they, they took that out of distribution and they redid the whole Padres with the San Diego Padres. So if you buy a factory set, you won't get that, uh, that error card. All right, just to go through some more that are in Mike Payne's book. Uh, the, 70, the 74 Mike Schmidt made the list. The Fanning 300, 300 keys, three years in a row. 74 highlights also made Mike Payne's book. Now I'm going to show you guys some error cards from the 70s. This is Herb Washington. Probably a lot of you guys never heard of him. We never considered this to be a special card, but it is. The reason why it is because it says pinch hitter. It's the only card in the history of making cards that has a position known as pinch hitter. Pinch hitter is not a position, but for this guy it was. He was a world-class sprinter, and the A's picked him up um, to steal bases. And if you look at the back of his cards, he has... Zero at bats. Zero. Zero at bats. Just stole bases. Here's another error card from uh, 77 tops. And that's Paul Russell and Rick Russell, their brothers. But the photos, the names, they're opposite. To the left should be Rick Russell and to the right should be Paul Russell. They got it mixed up. That's an error card from 1977, Big League Brothers. Here's another error with the 74 uh, rookie pitchers. If you look on the top right, Dave Frisch. Uh, free splint plan. I probably messed up boxed up his name, but that says Washington Nationals and again that team never existed So therefore that's an error Here's another uh, humorous error from the 
famous uh, Billy Morton, if you can see down the bat, he has the middle finger sticking out at you uh, with a little smirk on his face, and that's Billy Morton taking the pitcher, basically telling you to F off. Eric Corb with the 79 uh, Bump Wills with the Blue Jays in a Rangers uniform. That's an Eric Corb. Uh, also in Mike Payne's book, uh, Harmon Killebrew's last card from 1975. One of the greatest power hitters to ever play the game. Uh, also made the list on, on um, Mike Payne's book was the 1975 Aaron Sets the Home Run Record. All-Star card. Excuse me, I had to sneeze. Uh, another card, 1976 Bubblegum Blown Champion, uh, Kurt Bavakwa. This made uh, Mike Payne's book just out of sheer uh, uniqueness. Another unique card that made his list. He liked the unique ones, and this is unique only because probably had the best hairstyle in the history of Major League Baseball. The glowing, flowing afro of the bat, the man, Oscar Gamble. I was a Yankee fan. I used to love to watch him hit. He used to... He, he adored that left uh, right field short porch. He was a lefty pull hitter, and he bat batted behind Reggie Jackson. And him and Jackson together would just clout the ball over over the right field seats all the time. This also made Mike Payne's book the, the second year card of George Brett, 1976. And the reason why I think this made the book is that was one, the first of a few of George Brett's batting titles. Uh, also to make the list, the 77 uh, rookie card of the Bird, Mark Fidrich. He started the 1976 All-Star Game, and I think at the time, I think Dwight Gooden might have beat him out later on. Uh, but he was the youngest starter to ever start in an All-Star Game at 19 years old. There's the Rookie Cup. Also made my Bain's book is a 79 Nolan Ryan, and I think that's because that was the first year with the Angels. And uh, he actually started the All-Star Game that year. Him and Steve Carlton were the starters in the All-Star Game. Another year with 300 strikeouts. The rookie card of Paul Molitor, his first card by himself, also made Mike Payne's book. And him and Molitor, him and Yount together, sorry, were just unbelievable duo. Well, uh, here's another card. Uh, 75. I'm just adding some some of the favorites that I looked up on eBay. The 75 Jackson is tops on the list. The 76 Benches is always being sold for high prices. One of the best cards of the 70s. And then uh, this man, the 79 Thurman Munson, his last card of the year that he passed away. And that's card number two. But interesting enough, I have, I have a few of these. Interestingly enough, uh, this one here, I think, one of them is the, this one here is number 10. And the reason why that's number 10 is because it's the Burger, out of the Burger King set. Burger King used to give out uh, sets of teams Yankees I think the Reds I think depending on where you lived you got the cards I lived in New York so I collected that one as a kid went over to Burger King to eat and uh, get some cards here's the 73 rookie card of the Goose Rich Gossage and that'll get you a couple bucks that's a very iconic card uh, I put this in there this is the all time RBI guy all time R total base oh this is total base 6,172. I know he still has the record for RBIs, Hank Aaron. Willie Mays, 72. I think that's his last card. I'm almost positive. The 78 Gidry I had to put in there because that was the year he had that one point. Was it 7-4 ERA? It'll be on the next year's card. 25 wins. Got a couple of those. There's the 78 record breaker. And it says uh, most strikeouts in a nine inning game. And I believe he had 19 strikeouts versus the California Angels. It's another one of those. So then going with the Louis, Mr. Louisiana Lightning Man, I had to get his rookie card up there. There's the 76 rookie of Ron Guidry. Uh The only man to get two rookie cards in the 70s, Dale Murphy. He got it in 77 and also in 78. So I put in his 79 first year card as a catcher first baseman, which he never played. He was a center fielder for the Braves. Rookie card over Jack Morris. Maybe the best pitcher of the 80s. And his rookie card by himself in 79. And then, to, to kind of... No, we're not going to end it there. Is uh, Frank Thomas... I'm sorry. Frank Robinson's last card was 1975. Uh, throw some others in there. 
quickly. Uh, the 75 rookie of Keith Hernandez, upper right. I had to get Yogi Bear in there as a manager with the Mets. Had to do it, had to do it. 74, caught it by himself. Here's one of my favorite cards that I own. Willie McGee, did anybody know that in 1979, Willie McGee was a member of the West Haven Yankees. Should have kept that guy. All right, I want to show you the set. This is the Kellogg set. That's Frank Robinson. We'll go through quick. Ernie Banks. Stoudemire. Tony Perez. Gaylord Perry. Interesting set here. Frank Robinson. Frank Howard, he hit enormous moonshots. Big man. Harmon Killebrew also hit moonshots. Jim Palmer. My man, Willie McCovey. Bob Gibson still holds the lowest record for ERA with a 1.12 ERA in 1968. But now Jake, uh, Jacob DeGrom is getting after that one. Might beat that record. They had a 70, they had a set in uh, 75, or 70, was it 75? All the, all the Nolan Ryan cards, I mean, I mean, Hank Aaron cards, sorry guys. Another Hank Aaron. Here's Roger Maris, another Hank Aaron. 75 with the 56 most valuable players, Mantle. All right, and then I had to put, the, uh, one of the last cards I wanna show you as it's by itself is, this 1976 Fred Lynn. And the reason why I put this in here is because in 1975, Fred Lynn was not only Rookie of the Year, but he was also the 1975 American League MVP. All right, we're going to go quick now. I just want to show you a couple of the guys that had a lot, that I have a, that had a long career in the 70s, played every year in the 70s, right? Nolan Ryan. Okay, I'm going to show you Nolan Ryan's. 74, 75, 73, 74, 5. Another 75, Ryan and Carlton, a 74, Ryan and Seaver, Ryan Strikeouts, Walt Johnson, 76 record breaker, 300 or more strikeouts, I think I showed you that, Seaver and Ryan, Phil Necro, Nolan Ryan, all Nolan Ryans. Because all the base cards pretty much made the list, but the Record breakers and leaders didn't. All right, we got through Nolan Ryan. I want to show you some Jacksons. Uh, 72 Jackson. 74 Jackson. The other Jacksons you've probably already seen. The 77 Jackson. The year he hit the three home runs in the World Series and got Mr. October and a candy bar after him. Love this card as a kid. The 78 Jackson. Love this card. Another copy of it. The home runs in the World Series. Another World Series. Another copy of that. A couple of those. And then the 79s. Jacksons. And the last, I think the last one I want to show you. No, two more. Got tons of cards I still want to show you guys, but anyway, I love this Munson collection I have. That's from 1970, I believe. There's another one. Seventy-two in action. And mint seven. Seventy-two tops. Base in a mint seven. Thurman Munson. 76 Munson, All-Star, 73 Munson, 74 Munson, Seventy-six Hostess, 77 All-Star, Supreme Cuts Auto, Thurman Munson. 76 again. Now, last but not least, rows. 70, 70 rows, 72 rows. 
Sporting News. I'm not even sure if that's a 70s card. That might be a 60s card. That's 72 in action. 73. Two best hitters. I mean, batting leaders. What tremendous hitters. Carew and Rose on the same card. 76 Rose. 77 Rose. 78 Rose. 78 Record Breaker. Rose. And 77 record breaker. Most switch hits, Pete Rose. All right, let's see what we got on the clock here. All right, 35 minutes. I'm going to stop here because I don't want to make this too long. Guys, Breeze Cards, please like and subscribe. Signing out. Uh, leave comments too. Uh, enjoy. The, check out my 80s and 90s, and I'm going to do the 60s soon. Thanks.